Okay, my friends, in this video, I'm gonna show you one of the most ideal gardening setups that you can create, all right? So that by the end of the video, you'll know exactly how to do it yourself. And I will put links to all the products that I use in the description below so that you can do the exact same thing if you want or tailor it to your certain environment. Now, this setup I'm about to show you is ideal for the places that have subpar soil. If your soil is real heavy clay or rocky or uh, full of tree roots uh, or sand, all of that stuff, and you don't have the time or the money or the, the desire to bring in a bunch of organic matter and really work up the native soil, the land, then this is the ideal way to get a garden up and running. I mean, real fast. It's pretty much grass to garden in one day. So let's just get right to it. Okay, step one is to choose the appropriate location. Now, this location should ideally get full direct sun, no shade at all. But if you have to work with some shade, make sure that it's it does get at least six hours of direct sun. So place it on the south side of any tree cover that is in your yard. Okay, next step is to take the bags we're gonna be using for the project and to measure everything out in its placement where it's gonna go. So be sure to give yourself plenty of space. If you have the room, three or even five feet around all the sides of each bag is ideal. That way you have plenty of room to get the wheelbarrow up and down and things don't grow into each other. Now, if you don't have that much room, it's okay to put them closer together. If you're very limited, you can even place them side by side in one single file line. That also works too, okay? So get it all laid out how you're gonna want it and then stake or mark everything off so that you know how big the plot's going to be. Now that you have the dimensions, move all the bags out of the way because you know everything's gonna fit. Now lay down the weed landscaping fabric. When you lay the stuff down, be sure that you overlap the rows. And I overlap between, see they have lines on it, and so you wanna overlap the end of one section with the last line on the other section. And then we use these staples that I will link to in the description to hold everything down. The staples are very important, actually, because you do not want this stuff to fly away in the wind. Now, you can place them every 5 to 10 feet, and you just punch, you poke them right through the landscaping fabric and into the ground. Now, if you don't have these or you don't want to do uh, use the staples, you can weigh down this fabric with logs or rocks or things like that. But do not be putting mulch on top of this stuff. Believe me, if you put mulch on top of this, you will have weeds growing in your garden. So now your fabric is going to be the top thing on the, on the soil. That's going to smother out all the grass, all the weeds, everything. And it's going to breathe and let all the air and water flow through. So this is what your plot should look like, nice and stapled or weighted down and ready for the next step. Okay, now we are going to take our grow bags, and for this we are using the 100 gallon root pouch. I'll put a link in the description. I like the 100 gallons because it allows more room for the roots, and more roots equals more fruits. Remember that, my friends. Roots equals fruits. So, uh, here I am doing it all by myself, which requires a little bit of rigging and engineering, but I'm getting it done. So, fill them with the richest compost you can find, ideally. If you have a source to good, rich, black compost, use that. Here I am using pure leaf mold. Okay, now here is the secret of the masters that I'm gonna give to you, okay? Fill the bottom two thirds of each bag with pure leaf mold. What you see here is just leaves, nothing else, that have been broken down for one, maybe two years and that's gonna give a rich, balanced source of minerals for the plants to grow into. Everything loves to grow in leaf mold, okay? Then, when they're half or two-thirds full, move them exactly where you want them. Use the lines on the fabric to line everything up and make sure it's where you want it because once we fill it the remainder of the way, they're immovable. But if you do not have access to leaf mold, that's okay. You can fill the whole thing with compost or topsoil or even potting soil if you want. It might get expensive though, because they'll take a lot of bags, but you can fill it with anything. Okay, now you can see here that I have filled them the remainder of the way with sifted topsoil. 
The only reason they're not filled all the way to within an inch of the top is because I ran out of soil on the trailer. But I will be coming back to fill these pretty much uh, all the way to the top because it will all settle down. Because we're going to let this settle down and cook for like a month. And then we're going to plant into it. But if you have a bag of cow manure or a com composted chicken manure, any of that stuff, you can put them in as well right now. We'll do the pros and cons of this type of setup. The pros are vast and many. Okay, First and foremost, it's versatility. You can, pl you can do this kind of garden uh, on your rocky driveway on your tennis court, uh, on your concrete driveway, on the rooftop of your urban dwelling. You can do this anywhere because it's not reliant on the native soil, which is a major plus, uh, especially if you have subpar native soil. Tree roots, rocky, all the stuff I already described. Uh, so another big advantage is its ease and speed. You can go from grass to garden in one day. It's that simple. You don't have to wait from the fall before and bring in all kinds of organic matter and wait for it to decompose. No, we can have it up and running ASAP. Uh, another advantage is that it cannot be overwatered, and this is a major advantage for, especially for a lot of new beginners, is that uh, these bags you can't overwater this stuff. So if you live in a wet environment or if you just don't know yet how much water things are supposed to get. These are ideal for you because the soil, the substrate, will only hold a critical mass amount of water and then it will drain the rest. So it doesn't matter if someone, if you're inexperienced, you can just waterlog these things. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt your plants because any excess water is going to drain right out and it's going to have uh, air exchange. So they're going to dry out nice. Everything's got nice airflow and oxygen. They're really ideal for that. Okay, another pro of this setup is no weeds. You're not going to have any weeds. You lay down this weed fabric, say goodbye to weeds. They won't grow up through it if you get the good stuff that I linked to. Uh, also, in your, your beds, if you use good quality compost and leaf mold and things in, in the bags, you won't have any weeds in there either. So it's virtually an instant weed-free garden. Okay, another big pro of growing in these bags is that it forces the root system to consume what is in the bag. So you have much greater control over the nutrient density of the food in the, in the sense that if you put in good, rich compost that you've made yourself or leaf mold or any of these good, rich ingredients, that's all the plant has access to. It can't spread out into the clay that is kind of benign or kind of, you know, dull in nutrients. It's forced to consume only the good stuff. Okay, so there are a few cons to this setup. While the pros are vast, there are a few cons. And the primary one is that you have to bring in substance. You have to bring in leaf mold, compost, topsoil, something has to fill the bags as opposed to just tilling up the land. So there is an initial cost involved, of course, in the fabric, the bags, and whatever you fill them with. Another con is that they don't last indefinitely, of course, like as in in the ground lasts obviously indefinitely, or treated lumber, which is very expensive by the way, uh, would, would probably outlast these. These will last four, five, maybe beyond uh, seasons, okay? But if you're doing it the right way, if you're growing it the Viking way, then your soil inside the bags is going to be bursting with microorganism activity, and that's going to break down uh, the bags faster than if they were just, uh, you know, conventional. Okay, now here's something to consider about this setup though. What can be a major advantage in one area can be a hindrance in another area. For example, uh, the ability of these bags to drain really well and to have lots of airflow and to not be waterlogged, that's a great advantage in most places, especially wet places. But if you're in the desert, that's a major disadvantage. These bags will dry out quickly in the desert. And I know one of you is from like the Phoenix area, so for you, what you would want to do is actually lay out the, grant, the landscaping fabric and then cut a hole in the fabric the size of the, the grow pot and then dig a hole so that the, grow, the whole grow pot is uh, buried in the ground. That would conserve the moisture, okay? So that's something to definitely think about. These pots will dry out in the desert. Okay, I hope you got something from this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, share the video with a friend, because I'm trying to grow this channel like I'm trying to grow all kinds of stuff.